Hi guys, so today I'm going to have a really beautiful project for you to make. So I've come up with this really beautiful idea to use up some of my scraps, which I have all of them here. <laughs> so lots and lots of scraps that I've just taken off. Some of good, good piece that I can use. Some are just strips. Okay, some are leftover binding, etc. And um, two inch strips, and they're all from quilts that I've made. So I'm gonna push that aside for now so I can show you what I'm referring to in terms of what I'm going to make today. Now, what I have done so far is to take some strips, and I haven't cut anything. I've just taken what I want to use and just give them a little press so that they're nice and smooth and so that I can start my project. Now, I have a piece of leftover batting here. I am not sure entirely how long it is. I could measure it for you, but I can tell you that at the end of the project. That is not important at the moment. What's important is that what I'm actually making. So I have a sideboard or a buffet, uh, a kitchen buffet or hutch, whatever you actually call them, wherever you are based in the world. Um, I know them as a sideboard. And in Australia, we call them a, um, a buffet. Um, a kitchen buffet so I've made I've cut well I've used whatever strips of batting that I have here okay and I'm literally going to sew the strips onto this so I'm going to make this literally for that kitchen buffet um, table the sideboard table and the what I'm the purpose of it is literally just to add sort of decorating features on it so whether it may be pictures whether it may be a bottle of wine what it may be a vase of flowers, just literally to put that right in the middle of the wood because I love the beauty of showing the wood with furniture, all right? So I don't like covering up. However, I do like adding stuff just to enhance the beauty. So this is doubled here, and you can see there's lots of um, thread, etc., on it because it is a scrappy piece. And so I folded it in half. And it's important because I want to do something with the center area. So I folded it in half and I've literally marked it. So you can see that strip there where I've actually marked it. And so what I'm going to do for my first, I'm just gonna turn around the other way. And I have put a 90 degree mark in here. Now this strip measures six and a half inches in width. And so I've taken my ruler and put a 45 degree line there. I think it's 45 degree um, line from point to point. So what I did was literally put it on my mat there and six and a half. And I pointed, laid my ruler down. And I get the ruler and show you very quickly. If I use my, um, my little template here, so take my template and just literally put it from point to point and it literally tells me where that 45 degree line is. So I just did a mark in there, all right? So you can do that for yours. And so I did the same thing with uh, some scrap fabric here and I have cut a six, I think a six and a half inch width or square of fabric, let's find it a bit. And I just cut it on the diagonal, all right? And so what I'm going to do is lay that down there. So it's going to be a quilt as you go. So I'm putting it on the edge of that line so I can get started. And from that, I am literally going to start taking strips and sewing it front sides together. Now, that is the idea here. Okay, now I will eventually um, put a piece of fabric at the back and I'm going to use um, some curtain material or something mixed with those, those sort of fibers so whether it may be polyester and linen or cotton and linen um, but a very low percentage of cotton basically all right so it's not going to be used as something to keep you warm it's going to be used as a decorative feature so I am adding that um, curtain material at the back of it or linen material which is a little bit more structured all right so we'll hand in washing really nicely so i'm just going to sew front sides together and fold over and then continue so i've just taken some strips that i'm going to use and i am going to sew them on the diagonal like that just continue to go all the way down and this is no particular order i'm just picking up the strips as i have them okay so as i sew I am going to obviously cut the strips off. Don't cut them too close to the edge here because we want to turn it upside down whereby we can actually um, 
trim it down to size okay now and I am going to trim it before I actually sew it on so I don't have all this excess long fabric here to, to contempt with when I'm actually on the sewing machine I am going to stay to a particular width I am not so bothered about it being um, smaller than this or bigger so I'm really really kind of aiming for this size however if I pick up like a two and a half inch strip like this one I will trim it down in half I'll cut it in half okay so so anything slightly smaller but I don't want to go to two and a half so I just want to keep it um, similar now you can use two and a half inch strips obviously that will take up a lot more space and you will finish more quickly but I thought I just keep it slim the strips that is and work with it that way and I think because of the six and a half inch width of the actual batting here is small so I wanted to keep it consistent in that particular way so that's what I'm going to do now what I have done as I showed you here is I marked it and so that other half I'm actually going to put it there and I'm going to get another piece as well so I'm going to grab this piece get another piece and put it like so because I want to have this as my I want to identify that that is the middle and then obviously I will then continue with the strips going another way so in a sense my strips will be going in a di different direction so I'm going to show you now just so you get the idea of where I'm going with this so the strips then will be going this way because once we get to this area the strips would have been at this angle so that is what I am aiming at. So I'm just bringing the strips closer so you can see what I'm aiming at here. So I am going to use different strips, different color strips as much as I possibly can. I will have to cut, obviously, because not all of them are pressed. Like this one is a bit crumpled, but you do get the idea. Okay, so again, just continue. So I'm gonna have that pattern going the same way but different in the middle. So I want that solid in the middle because I want to show sort of a burst of colors coming out. All right, that's the idea anyway. So I'm gonna get started and I'm gonna show you what I've, um, when I start sewing so that you get the idea of how to make yours. Now you could make your strip wider. You can actually go to a proper table runner size, but I'm just doing a strip for the buffet um, sideboard kitchen table all right so let's get started on that okay so I have my roll here with my backing on and my batting here in the middle and I'm going to start with adding my strips so I'll have my first and I've just rolled it up so that it's easier to handle and go and so all right so I'm gonna put my first strip on here now this side is the bumpy side of the batting so if I were to put the fabric on there and smoothing it off it actually stays without falling off so just remember to do that so it's a little bit you don't have to use glue or anything like that or pin based but I have pinned my um, batting on to my backing so just just so that it doesn't move all right um, you can glue base as well, but I just I haven't got any spray base glue, so um, it's all finished now. So I've just used some little um, long pins to hold it together. All right, so I'm just inching this to the edge of where I want it to be, and I'm going to start with my first strip, and I'm just going to do it front sides together. There. I'm just measuring and I'm just going to give it a little trim so I don't have all of that fabric with me so what I tend to do is just to fold it over just to make sure that I have, I have not trimming it too short so I'm just going to cut there and again this is now um, scraps again and I'm just going to sew turn it over and continue all the way down now before I do that um, what you need to bear in mind is that you must make sure that you fold it in half and get your middle point of your table top for your buffet all right that's if if you want to put that feature design in the middle if you don't want to do that then you can go right ahead and just continue sewing all the way down at a, um, at a 45 degree until you actually get to the end okay And again, I'm using a quarter inch 
foot on as usual um, even though it's a quilt as you go I still keep it consistent to what it actually is supposed to be and I just hold it and sew it down So that's the first one done. So fold it over and that's what that looks like. I think I'm gonna brighten this up so that you can actually see um, a little bit better. There you go, I've brightened the camera. So it's a lot more brighter now. Okay, so then I'm gonna take my other strip and put it down. Now you can go with any color you damn well please. <laughs> Okay, um, I think I like that actually. I noticed the strip is bigger, but I am going to stay with it. Now, at this end here, I could have gone, I'll put a little bit closer so you can see that. I should have extended a little bit more, but I'm not gonna worry about that because the next one will cover it. Okay, um, I think I will go with this one here. Yep, I like that. So again, I'm making sure it extends fairly well beyond your batting not so much the backing but the batting is what we're the most concerned with and I'm just going to do I need to trim it no I think it's okay hold it in place goes under and then continue to sew I imagine this will finish very quickly And when I actually, I'm going to put that up, when I actually um, sew, I sew off there. I'm going to dim this just a touch. I think it's slightly too bright now. I think that's better. Yeah, so when I sew, I sew literally onto the backing fabric again and fold that over. That's looking beautiful already. All right, and notice I'm just smoothing it all out with my hand because I want it to be nice and neat and I again I'm going to continue with my other piece of strip I am going to cut this one because it's quite long so and I have ironed my strips okay this one I think I missed or I may have ironed another piece which I can see here Already, I put that one down, so I'll leave it there. Okay, so again, I'm gonna put that on there. I know you can't see me sewing, but uh, I think everyone knows how to sew a quarter inch. By now, I will most likely turn the camera around and show you the shot if that's easier. Okay, and that is that other piece on there. And again, flip over. Oh my God, that's looking beautiful already. I'm gonna remove that pin because I don't want it to go on my machine. And yeah, just continue. That is it basically. That is what we are aiming for. And again, it doesn't really matter what colors. What I will say though, and hence the reason why it's important that you iron, because this one I didn't, and it's a little bit puffy. So what I'm going to do is literally just get the iron on there. So I'm gonna get my iron and just smoothen that off, because I think it applies a lot more better if it's ironed the so strips that is all right so even if you don't iron it before the strips i'm referring to before you put it on make sure you do iron it as you go so that might be easier i am going to go i do like the black but i don't want to put it next to that one so as much as i it's a scrappy look it's a controlled scrappy
guys so I've come to the middle now and I wanted to show you what I have done so let's imagine for a second that this one is blocked off so when I did the last strip before I did the last strip I should add I placed my triangle like so just to ensure that it's going to fit correctly okay and I had enough space now what you need to do is when you get to this area here and if you look carefully you can see that my strip is slightly wider than the other so this one I think I use it at a full two and a half um, and I just wanted to make sure that I didn't have to add another tiny piece of strip between there had I made it smaller like the other strips so for example had I made it this size I would have then need to add a more tinier strip as you see it protrude in there okay and then add that on so what I did in, in essence really was just simply to add a two and a half inch strip at the end now it depends on what size strips you are using um, in order for you to do that but when you get to that corner you'll obviously have to make that judgment as to what size you are going to use and so I put the last strip down referring to this strip now Put the last strip down and then what I did was then lay this front sides together sew it down and then flip it over okay so when I came to this side now I did the same thing I then now because if I if I flip it over in, in essence this area here is loose so then I take my other strip and then put it front sides together put a stitch there, flip it back over. All right, so now I am at this point. Okay, so this is where a decision needs to be made. You can do one or two things, and I'm just rolling up the excess so that the, um, the balance of, of the fabric can come into the shot. You can do one or two things. You could A, decide, right, okay, I'm going to look for the same sets of colors, strips that I have, on this side and add it to that side or you can do a different color of strips now to be honest I do like the controlled um, scrappy look okay yes it is scraps I'm using they're all left over from quilts that I've made in the past or present and if you look carefully you would actually recognize a lot of these strips and if you look back at my um, videos you will see these fabrics being used okay so you can make that judgment call do you want to use the same pieces of strips or very similar color pattern so for example if I didn't have this one here this particular purple and, and white then I can easily add this one here okay and then continue with the colors all the way down so I have this strip here again this corresponds with this one and I add it there so you could add the same or if you want you can mix it all up so in that essence you are still using the same fabrics but you don't necessarily have to go with the same order okay so I will leave that judgment call to you I mean either way it will look beautiful the whole essence of it is that it's scrappy either it's controlled or you can leave it as varied as you want to so again any colors you want to add but I think because I like the control scrappy look I am literally going to go for the same color pattern I'm not sure if I have all of it but I will certainly try and if I cannot fit it in if I cannot fit it in then obviously I will choose other colors that's very similar so for example if I hadn't got this particular one here if I haven't got this one I would use a different blue to add to it so then it corresponds with the darkness or the, the darker fabric and then I move on to the lighter fabric and so on all right so that's what I'm going to continue doing what I would advise though is what I have noticed right now is because all of the strips extend beyond where I have my batting here my batting ends here exactly where you see this is and even though this may slightly go up that is not where the batting actually ends the batting is right there 
So you have an option, a decision to make. You could either trim it off right now because that's one of my concerns. I'm thinking, well, if I continue, I will not be able to see where the batten ends because my backing fabric does not go to the width of the backing. So my, my, my batting and my backing is completely different sizes. I've only measured the backing to be shorter. Okay, as you can see, that's the batting there, that's the backing there. All right, so you can decide, right, do I want to now literally trim all of this off? So in essence, you would put your ruler and trim it off, or you could leave it towards the end and trim the whole thing together. As I said, the only concern is if you continue, you would have the same amount of fabric extending on this side and on that side. And your only guidance here will be the center here for you to measure to trim. Now, what you also need to bear in mind is that this strip here, which will probably make it a bit easier for you, this strip here is six and a half inches in width, which is the length and the width of my actual ruler. So in a sense, I really haven't got a problem. All I need to do is fit my ruler on top there and cut it off. So I'm just giving you the ideas in case you came to this point, especially if you're a beginner and you're thinking, oh my God, well, how do I know where to cut? Hence the reason why it's six and a half. I literally use the width of my ruler to make the judgment call and to what. Okay guys, so all I've done is literally put the quilt top on the table or my cutting board and I've lined it up to the edge and I've literally felt where I can actually feel the end of that batting stops and I've lined it all up making sure it's right to the end and I'm just simply going to trim it down. My sideboard mini quilt is completed. Now tell me if that doesn't look beautiful. Look at it. It is so, so lovely. Really, really gorgeous. Sometimes scraps, 
still amaze me. It really does. Oh my gosh, it's just so lovely. I can't get over how pretty it actually looks. So guys, if you've got some scraps, hey, get it all out, especially if you've got strips and use it. Look how beautiful that looks. It really has shown off just something so simple can work on your sideboard as a little mini quilt. Absolutely gorgeous. Now remember the middle with those batiks there? Look how beautiful that looks. Just so pretty. Really, really pretty, guys. It is 70 inches in length, and I didn't measure it. It literally is just simply what was left over from sewing my quilt. So you don't always have to do a table runner. You can just use your imagination and make something else that's really beautiful and pretty, guys. I am just so loving it. What a simplistic thing to make with scraps. I mean, absolutely beautiful. Really, really pretty. And the colors of all the fabrics it just works. They've come together really beautifully. The contrasting of everything. I've even mixed in batiks in there. And remember I said to you, I was actually going to try and remain consistent with the colors. So very, very similar. So what I couldn't get for the other side, I swapped for something else. So I think on this side, I use another piece of batik on the other side. Yes, and I can see it right now. So remember, it's next to the blue spots and you'll see what I used instead. But really lovely. The binding, I just use a really striking butterfly, scrappy um, fabric here and that was leftovers as well. So there you go, that's a different color altogether that I've used for that batiks there and just really continued. Even this one is different to the other side again, but I just looked for very similar fabrics that I could work with and again ended with those batiks there. So really beautiful guys, simple yet effective and sometimes we just gotta think about things that we can use in the home or to sell if that's what you do with your products that you make. But overall, beautiful, simple project. Use up some scraps and make something fantastic with it. So if you enjoyed this video, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. And be, of course, just leave me a lovely message of what you actually think about this. I thought it was really beautiful. It was something I just made literally in a couple hours time didn't take long at all and it was really satisfying to see the end result so I kind of knock it really it's just really lovely so yeah join me and make a beautiful sideboard table quilt and um, yeah absolutely gorgeous guys using scraps again never cease to amaze me scraps oh, just gorgeous bye for now guys happy quilting love you lots